The second law of thermodynamics, entropy and heat plus examples. Okay, so let's remind ourselves of the second law of thermodynamics. So this total entropy change for a spontaneous process is positive. And last time we talked about positional disorder, so that was related to the volume and the distribution of the molecules or particles in space. But now we're going to talk about thermal disorder. And this involves the distribution of energy states among the particles. So what energy states do these particles have access to? And this is related to the temperature of the system. So here is an example. So here is a hot system, and each one of these black lines is an energy state. So at this high temperature, molecules have access to all of these energy states. And so that's indicated by the color. Now a cold object, in contrast, only has access to these low energy states. So all of these are empty. So the cold object has far fewer energy states that are accessible. Now, once we put these two guys in contact with each other, heat will flow from the hot to the cold object until they arrive at the same temperature. So the hot object will cool down, the cold object will warm up, and in the end, they will be at some temperature and they will both be at the same temperature. And in this combined state, then you can see that more energy states than the cold object are accessible, but fewer than the hot object. So we end up kind of in the middle. Now, entropy increases with increasing temperature. So as we add heat to the system, then the number of accessible energy states increases. And so that's what we saw in the previous slide. The hotter the object is, the larger the number of accessible energy states for that substance. So let's look at the entropy of fusion. So this is melting. And what happens as a substance melts? So we can actually calculate it, this change in entropy of fusion, by taking the reversible heat. So this is just the heat from a reversible process. We're not going to go deeply into that. But essentially, we have the heat divided by the temperature at which that system is held. And remember that the heat at constant pressure is delta H. And so since we're talking about melting or fusion, we have delta H of fusion divided by the temperature at which this system is held. So this quantity can be looked up for substances. So can the entropy of fusion. So these are tabulated data. You can find those values as well. So let's look at what happens as we heat a substance from being very cold and a solid. Let's look at the entropy. What happens as we heat it? On the y-axis, we have the substance's entropy. And we are just going to increase the temperature as we go along. So the entropy increases at a very steady rate as the temperature increases. Now once the substance reaches the melting point, then there's a large jump in entropy. So there's a large jump in entropy associated with going from a solid to a liquid. Let's keep on increasing now the temperature of the liquid. So increase, increase, increase. And once we reach the boiling point, then there's a very large jump in entropy associated with that, with molecules going from the liquid phase to the gas phase. And then we can continue heating the gas, and again, we have a steady increase in entropy. So delta S increases as a substance melts. So we have a solid where particles are essentially fixed into place. And as it melts, the number of positions that are accessible and the motions of the molecules increase. So what do you think the sign of delta S for vaporization is? If you said it's positive, then you're right. So as the liquid vaporizes, more positions are available. So you're going from a liquid phase where molecules can move around in the liquid, but they can't take up as much volume. As you continue heating, more and more of them vaporize, then that entropy increases. So entropy increases as the substance goes from the liquid phase to the gas phase 
because there are many, many more motions and positions available to that gas. So next we're going to talk about the third law of thermodynamics and the standard molar entropy.